it's like a burden on them. It stops. Can you expand on that? Why is that this is so important? Uh, yeah, that's one of the things that, for me that really transformed my life. Uh, I was one of those people where I did care a lot about. I grew up in a Mexican family where growing, they were always worried what everybody was going to think about them. You know, I don't know if has a similar experience, but I, that's how I grew up. So, you know, just sit in the corner, be quiet, don't, don't make a, you know, don't make a, a fuss or whatever. And uh, I always uh, was worried what people thought about me. And then finally I realized that that was not going to get me where I wanted to go. And I saw the people that were doing really well in life, they were bold. And they just did what they needed to do. And they didn't, they didn't care what people thought about them. And so I made a decision that I wasn't going to do that anymore. I was not, I'm going to... I'm a good person. I'm not going to hurt anybody. I'm not going to do anything that would injure somebody in any way, shape, or form. And so, um, I just, I just, I just was going to be myself, and I was going to be bold, and I was going to be daring, and I was going to go for it. And whatever people thought, that's what they thought. I can't do anything about what you think about me. I can only do something about what I want to do with my life. And so I think if you take that kind of, that's your thought process, and you just go after what you want. And whatever they're going to say is whatever they're going to say. And you know what? It, it, if it doesn't define you, then it, you shouldn't worry about what they're thinking about you. And so I, I, I did that. And, and I've had people say stuff about me and whatever. But I, you know, they don't know me. Just like they don't know you. They don't really know who you are and what your heart is uh, you know, made of. And, and so as long as you're not going to hurt anybody in any way, shape, or form, you're good. You're a good person. What, what other people think about you is none of your business, okay? And, then, and there's a, actually a book, there's actually a book called, you know, What You Think of Me is None of My Business. And when I, uh, I read that book and I started to just do what I needed to do and I stopped worrying about what people thought about me, my life took off, my business took off, everything took off. And, and, and because you can't, you know, you, you look how when you were worrying about what people Think about you, you're not being who you are. You're being something other than who you are. And you, if you're going to become super successful in your life, you just need to be who you are as long as that's, that's a good person. And I believe that, you know, everybody in here, you're, you're deep down inside, you're a good person. You're not going to take advantage of people. So if you're not going to take advantage of people, then you need to let them know what you can do for them in Primerica, how you can help them, how you can help them change their lives, you can help them get debt free, you can help them retire well, help them educate their children, help them have a much, much better life than they currently have right now. So stop worrying about what other people think about you and just go be you. Okay? Yeah. Let's see. Let's, oh, good. Such a great message. Wow, man. Such a great message. Hector, it is an honor to be up here with you. Mario, same thing, man. Um, I had a question, right? I'm going to kind of take you back to the 90s. Because I, I heard a rumor, right? It's a two part question. I heard a rumor that back in the 90s, that your hierarchy, your organization, was doing 25% of Primerica business. Is that true, number one? And then number That's two. That's true. That's true. That's true. And, then, and then question part number two is there is a there is a lot of million dollars, a million dollar earners that came from that environment. Right. And do you see a lot of million dollar earners coming from this environment here today? Absolutely, yeah. You know, if you're going to make a million dollars, you're going to have to do what I talked about. Stop worrying what people think about you. All right, that's number one step you got to take. Because uh, if you're going to if you're going to become super successful, you know, people are envious. They'll take hot shots at you. They'll do all that stuff. But as long as you know who you are, don't worry about them. But you could definitely become a million dollar earner, multi millionaire. Earner. I mean, I, I I've made a hundred million dollars since I've been a prime. That was, that was just because I did a couple things. One is like what these guys have done and they're doing right now. Uh, you build a big base shop. You got, you got, if you're not focused on building a big base shop in Primerica, uh, you're just not very smart. That's all there is to it. You're just smart. You don't get it. That is everything in Primerica. Building a big base shop and producing strong first generation RVPs is what's going to allow you to become a millionaire quicker. That should be your focus every minute of every day. How can I get wider? How can I have more directs to me? And, and how can I develop them?
how can I produce more RVPs? That's, that should be your focus because that's where all the money's at for Americans. Bay shop, first generation. I mean, there's money down the line, on it, but that's where the big, big money is. If you look at right, like right now what um, Willie's doing right now, he's making half a million dollars a year. He's gonna probably end up making, I, th I think he'll be, he'll be at $10 million in income probably in a year or two. Because of the focus they have, this big bay shop, producing strong first generation RVPs. That should be what you should be thinking about every minute of every day in your prime America business. And the truth is every one of you can do that. It may take some extra work. You might have to study harder. You might have to really work on your skill sets, your sales skills, your people skills, or you know all that your time management skills, but it's doable for everyone in the room here. Imagine if all of us become build big businesses, become multi-millionaires, what kind of impact that we can have on this world. Right, and how many different people you'll, you'll you'll touch in your life? So I, I would I would focus on focus on building a big base and, and uh, strong first. That that should be that should be your your mantra in primary. That is awesome. Give me a hand, man. That was great. I get, I, I get this question a lot, and to ask me like, man, Mario, is it going to be worth it? Because in the beginning, you're investing a lot. And we've seen like your impact in my life and our life, all of our lives here, right guys? It's a ripple effect of this man. And those years that you're grinding and you're after, I remember hearing your CDs and you're driving and you would laugh and like, you're just visualizing yourself like, man, you're, you're already visualizing what your life is gonna be like, but you made that a reality and more. And when your wife had some health challenges, because you built a business, the, the, the opportunities you had to, to, to spend more time, the medical help, everything. Like, I don't think most people get how worth it it is to give it everything you got. Yeah, uh, yeah, my, my wife, I mean, she uh, got diagnosed with breast cancer 18, this is her food motion, 18 years ago. And, um, I was already financially independent by that time. I had a big business. I was making, you know, about $3 million a year at that point. And so I, I decided uh, that I wasn't going to work like I was working because I worked like a crazy person to get to that place, right? So I, I decided that I was going to take the time that I had left with my wife, Jan, to uh, spend it with her and do adventures. And during that time, I was over the last 20 years. Um, we had an amazing life. We went. We traveled to 70 different countries around the world. I did. We did four around the world trips in a private jet. We wow. did. Uh, you know, we traveled and had, had an amazing time. We had the most incredible experiences. And I don't have any regrets. I mean, she's passed now, but thank God I did that because I've, I'm looking back. I, if I would have just been grinding still and not spending time with her, I would have missed out on all those amazing opportunities. So I have those memories to. Go with me till I die. And, uh, and, and every, every one of you, every one of you are going to run into issues like that in your family where people need help or whatever. And you, you, you know, you you have a business opportunity where you could be the go-to person here. So if something happens, they, they can go to you and you can you can help them. That that especially your immediate family, and your children, you know, and your maybe your mom and dad and your brothers and sisters. You could really make a big, big difference, and I think the thing is, is that because I did that, I have no regrets. And I think you want to have a life where there's no regrets. And I, I, I did that, and I'm, I'm so glad, and uh, thank God every day that I had the opportunity to do that in America. And during that last, you know, 18 years while we were doing all that, I wasn't working like I used to work, and I made 55 million dollars during that time, not working. So imagine you took 18 years off and you still made $55 million. That's, that's the business you're in. That's the opportunity you have if you build it right. Wow. That's amazing. That was phenomenal. I think, I think everybody in here, as Mara was saying, we work. And because we don't see the, the evidence right away, right. Right, we stop. Right. And it's like it's not working. And, you know, I wanted to ask you, kind of on the same vein there, you know, about self-improving, you know, because this is group improving. Yes. But self-improving is just like it says, it's self 
improve when you by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, can you talk about that? Because I remember winning in the Senate with Gary, and Gary told me, don't ask him like dumb questions, but I did. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Gary asked him, don't ask him like how to handle an objection, but I had this objection that I wanted to get off my chest, right? right? And I threw it to you, and you handled it so smooth. I thought like I was talking to you like a brain. I was like, this guy is smart, man. Right? And it just helped me, you know, with a set of fundamentals and all those things you created for, you know, the hierarchy and everybody outside of the hierarchy. Can you talk about how important, you know, self-improvement is? It's everything. Because you're not going to get to where you want to go with where you're at, with who you are right now. You've got to grow. And, and, and what, we, what we all want to become in Primerica is a people magnet. You want people coming to you, wanting to be with you, want to be part of your organization, and part of, of who you are. And, and in order to do that, you have to you have to bring a lot of value to the table. You got to start working on all your skill sets. There's, you know, there, in, in Primerica, there's you, you got to learn how to prospect, you got to learn how to present, you got to learn how to overcome objections, which is critical. You, you've got to you've got to learn how to do all that stuff. So you have to grow you in order to attract the right kinds of people. The better you are, the more competent you become, the better quality of people you're able to attract into your business, which makes it grow that much faster. You know, you, you, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna be able to do that. So I think it's critical that you work on yourself. Like for me, I, I, one thing I did early, even bef this is before Prime America, uh, there's Tom Hopkins, who's a sales trainer, right? He's a good friend of mine, and uh, probably top one or two, three sales trainers in the world. I, he had a program called How to Master the Art of Selling Anything. It was 12 audio cassettes. That was back when there was actually cassettes, right? Before your time, but that's when I'm old. <laughs> uh, and so I listened to that program. Honestly, I did this driving to and from work, which is basically an hour each way every day. I listened to that 12 audios every day at least five days a week for three straight years. I stopped listening to the radio. I didn't listen to any other stuff. I stopped watching TV during that time, and I listened to those things, and it got me to the point where my sales skills were so good, I could close pretty much. If they're closable, I closed them. If they're recruitable, I recruited them. I, I, I got my skill set, and my, most importantly, I got my self-confidence at a level that I felt that I, that I could hire anybody, I could close anybody, and that people were idiots if they didn't get in business with me because I could help them become successful because of my skill, okay? That's, that's what I did, and that's what caused that explosive growth. I got so good that I was able to attract all the right kinds of people, and I, not only that, I was able to teach them how to get results and how to become professional salespeople themselves, and that's what caused the growth. So that personal development, you should, if you're not spending Every available moment of your life on personal development right now while you're trying to build your business, you're not getting it. You, you, you need to do that because you're not going to get there with the current level of thinking you currently have, with the current level of skill set you have. You're not going to get where you want to go to be up on a stage where these guys make millions of dollars, right? In primary, you can't get there unless you grow your skills, right? Your sales skills, your people skills, your you know time management skills, all the skills that are necessary. People don't become wealthy by accident. Okay? That's not how it happens. That, that's only in fantasy land, all right? In reality, people that become wealthy work their ass off, okay? That's, right. that's what they do. That's what you're gonna need to do. Yep. Sheesh, come on. Go! Okay, and we'll find out, 
in the next two or three years if you are or not, because you'll either be here or you'll be gone, okay? Wow. So, what I, what I, in the, in the beginning of that third uh, third year in, in Primerica, because those first few years I was just figuring out how to do this thing right, then I, I, I was wasting lots of time with the wrong people. I made a decision at the end of that third year that I wasn't going to work with anyone that wasn't motivated. Anybody, period. If you're not motivated, I'm going to be nice to you, good to see you, how's your family doing, thanks for coming, but I didn't spend any time with people that weren't motivated. What does that mean? They had to show up to all the meetings, they had to listen to all the tapes and audios I recommended, they read the books, they, sh you know, they did all the work to grow their skills, they mastered the seven fundamentals. I was watching people's behavior and if I saw they had the right behavior, then I, I was like, uh, you know, white on rice. I was spending tons of time with them, helping them, coaching them, you know, pushing them, that sort of thing. And so when I started only working with motivated people, my that's the next year I went from making like fifty some thousand to eighty to uh, eighty thousand a year to four hundred thousand a year to eight hundred thousand a year to a million to two million to three million. That that focus of only working with motivated people was the number one thing that caused the, the, the kind of explosive growth that I had. So you, you, all you have to do is watch people's behavior. They're going to tell you by their behavior whether they're worth investing in or not. Okay? Powerful. Okay. Woo! That's a, you know, growing up in the business, obviously, People think success is like this, Ryan. It's really kind of like this, right? You know, and I know there's some people in this room here today that maybe they came here and they're kind of like battling, like you know, if I'm gonna do it or I'm not, you know, and like you know, if, if I hear something good, then you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get more uh, uh, convicted. Like, what what would you say to to somebody here, you know, that might be kind of you know, on the fence, because truth be told, I thought about quitting a million times. You know, and I actually did. I quit for like five minutes. And, and then, then I'm like, where the heck am I gonna go? You know, I'm like, all right, I'm back now, right? But, uh, you know, I, I think that's very normal when you hit the adversity and these walls. Can you talk about that? So I know there's somebody out here. Well, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of you who are kind of on the fence. You know, you're not really sure, do I really want to do this or not? Is it real? Or are they just a bunch of motivational gurus? Or what are they, you know? Uh, but the reality is, is uh, you have to have a why. Uh, you know, you've got to have a why. If you don't have a why, you never, when you have adversity or people quit or you get a rejection or whatever, you're, you're going to want to quit. You're going to you're going to fold like a cheap tin, okay? And so you have to have a very, you know, like for me, there was no way for me to quit because I had these huge aspirations, huge goals. I wanted to really be somebody. I wanted to get wealthy. I, I wanted to get wealthy, and I'm not embarrassed to say that because being wealthy is freaking awesome. That's okay. right. <laughs> you know, it is awesome. You know, it's, the, the greatest thing is when you're wealthy, I get up every day I do exactly what I feel like doing that day, period. I don't care what you want me to do, I'm doing what I want to do, and I'm going to do it and have a great time doing it, okay? And so, all of you have the potential to have a life like that, where you get to get up every day, you do what you want to do that day, and it doesn't matter what it costs, or where it's at, or what's going on. You know, like yesterday, I, I, uh, I, I have some friends, uh, some other Primerica friends who live back east, and they just invited me to go on a you know, two-week golf vacation in, in, in Europe, okay? So I said, okay, I'm in, let's go. Because I don't, I don't have to be anywhere. I, you know, this, money's not an issue for me, so, and I love golf. I'm a golf, I'm a golf uh, addict, okay? And so I'm gonna do that. And that's the kind of thing where things come up, you get to do it because, because you can, yeah. right? And there's a lot of stuff that you aren't able to do right now, and I don't mean this derogatory, because you just can't afford it, right? There's all kinds of stuff that you would like to do, but money's the issue. Money's the issue for virtually everybody on the planet, by the way, okay? And you have a vehicle right here to make the kind of income and money that can allow you to have a magical life, an incredible life where you, you have these awesome experiences. All of you have, you're in a room right now with three guys up here who are multimillionaires, and they're gonna make millions before they die, right? 
and, and, and you have that opportunity, but you gotta you gotta take advantage of it. Wow. You can't you can't just you can't just watch from afar. You you, you gotta you gotta grow a pair if you, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay? <laughs> Because yeah. if you don't get tough mentally, I don't care what you do, you're not going to be really successful. Everybody that's hugely successful right now, they're getting shot at from every year, but they, they, they don't care because they're tough. Right. And you got to get tough. Right. And you have kids, most of them. How many of you have kids? Yeah. yeah. You don't want them to have a great life. Like my, my kids went to, uh, my son went to the Horton Business School, which is the one or two top business school in the world. My daughter went to Stanford University, and then now she's a, a director and a screenwriter. They have, they're, they're both doing unbelievably well, and all that came from me deciding to build a business and be an example to them. And all of you have kids, you are either going to be a great example or a terrible example. Mm. And you got to decide which one you're going to be. Mm. Wow. wow. Because we got to have a reset. Even if you have a business right now, what if we act as if we're starting brand new today? What would happen to your business? So let's, I would be like, he's talking to me, I would close my eyes, but I'd be like, Hector, you're talking to a brand new heckle of art, starting from scratch, and today's premier, the what, the wisdom you know, the hierarchies you built. Inside and outside, you build a lot of hierarchies, it's ripple effect. What advice would you give that young buck, Hector Lamarck, that is just desire, willing to do whatever it takes to be that one for their family? Because when Hector Lamarck calls it a restaurant, right? Like, is this the Lamarck? His last name matters. That's right. You guys follow me here? Yeah. His last name means something because of what he did. So Hector, what, would, what advice would you give that person? Well, the, the number one thing I did is I work on me. Your, your biggest issue, your best friend or worst enemy is going to be yourself. You're either going to be your best friend or worst enemy. And, and how, how we're going to determine that is how you spend your time. Are you working on yourself constantly? Are you, are you growing all your skills? Are your sales skills improving? Are your people skills improving? Are your time management skills improving? Is your leadership skills improving? Are they getting better so that you can build something substantial that, that can last for your family forever? Like right now, you know, I, I know it's one point I'm going to pass. I'm, I, I just turned 67. I'm, I'm old. Right? And, and, uh, and I just thinking this morning, damn, in 13 years, I'm, I'm going to be 80. Sheesh. Okay. So uh, I, I know because of what I did, my family is taken care of forever. I, they're, they're, they're inheriting a lot. They're, they're inheriting my three million plus a year income. My kids are going to get that that income. Imagine that you have parents who left you three million dollars a year of income. Not to mention all the money that I've already saved. I have three homes that are worth close to twenty million dollars. They're going to get that. They're going to get all this in a, in, in, a, in a lot of money saved. Okay, so they're going to get all that because of what I did. And, uh, you know, I, and I grew up, I'm the fifth of seven children. My dad had, is from Mexico, came from, he came over from Mexico when he was 18. And he, he had a third grade education, he had seven kids, I'm the fifth. And uh, I, I changed the direction of our family forever. So even though my dad and my parents were, were poor, I grew up, look at, I grew up in a thousand square foot home with nine people in it. You know, six brothers and sisters and my mom and dad, a little thousand square foot home with nine people. That's how I grew up. We had no money really to speak of. We were eating and all that. I closed, but you know what? I didn't have an example of success, of financial success in my, in my life. And I come from a huge Mexican Catholic family and there's like, you know, a million of us, right? And, uh, and nobody in that family of mine, extended family, was such financially successful. Everybody worked like janitors, and they worked in factories, and, but no success, nobody owned a business, nobody successful. I didn't have one example of, of a person financially successful, and I figured it out. And you can too, but you got to pay the price and study and work on yourself and make yourself better. Make your, turn yourself into a, a magnet. That people want to be involved with you because of what you offer them. Okay? Powerful. Uh, man, was
Is that awesome? Yeah. Guys, you guys with this history, you're a part of it, you're going to have access to have this video. I would challenge you to listen to it over and over again, but most important, apply it. Yes. Apply it. And I can't wait until we're interviewing you as the next Primerica legend. Thank you so much, Thank you. Thank you.